Art is an interesting thing, and one of the problems with most public art these days is that it's not accessible to a broad enough range of the population. And obviously contemporary museum art or contemporary gallery art is accessible to even fewer people. It tends to be very elitist, it tends to require specialized knowledge, you have to have a degree in philosophy, you have to speak French, you know, all these ridiculous things. Um, I like my what I do to be approachable on as many levels as possible. So a school child who comes through here could have the first same reaction as the 45-year-old sophisticate with the philosophy degree, which is, wow, what is that thing? And they don't even have to know that this is an art park or a sculpture park. It doesn't, that's meaningless. It has no, no meaning whatsoever. That the initial impression is something that intrigues them, makes them curious to know more. And then, of course, once they see something that, that, that is fantastic to some degree, then, then they start to think about why it's there and what it might mean and how it relates to the place and is it art or is it not art or why is this stack of papers here in the forest? All those questions come up. The paper pieces, it takes a lot to get me to do one anymore. The West has always been important to me. Uh, these mountains around here and down into Wyoming, Colorado, I've spent a lot of time out here hiking. So the opportunity to be here sounded really intriguing and uh, I said sure and came out. We spent a few days here last April where we looked at the sites, we met the people, tried to figure out what the possibilities were and came up with a little bit of an idea which in fact would never have occurred to me had I not come for the site visit which is why they're so important. I was looking for a, a topographical part that might be of some interest. Everything's very flat. The trees, of course, are of great interest. But we found this gully, little drainage ravine here, and that was really the one outstanding feature that wasn't flat. Um, so we found this and then we started looking for a stand of trees where I could build a wall of paper or some form that integrated the trees into it, which I've also done before. Uh, and we couldn't find enough trees that were close enough together, at which point Rick said, well, I can get you as many lodgepole pines as you want, and we'll just stick them in the ground. And that had never occurred to me and never would have. And so what you're looking at is something that I've never done before and could not have happened had I not come to this particular place. And one of the things that you have here in this valley is logging. And everybody knows how to skin the bark off of one of these trees after they know how to cut it down. So taking advantage of that is something that was really intriguing and is enabling us to build this wall the way we are. And I don't, at this stage, know how it's going to end, how tall the paper will be, where the trees will be cut off, if at all. It's, I don't know any of that. But um, that combination of things, the gully and the trees, uh, was of interest to me and it took off from there. Okay. A lot of artists these days, in fact the majority, start a work with an idea. Uh, an idea for a specific place and it's something they've been thinking about. I, I don't really begin that way, it's a different thing. I don't have a concept, and I, as decisions that are being made are aesthetic decisions, they are not conceptual decisions. The concepts have to do with geology and deep time and evolutionary biology and all of these kinds of things, but those go back for 30 years and it's just sort of the, the gestalt that I live in, if you want a big word like that, if you like a little German. Um, so I don't, I don't really go to a place and think real hard about what it means. The one obvious thing which most people will pick up on, I think, is that paper comes from trees and you, we're putting it back into the forest where theoretically it will biodegrade, create new soil from which new trees will grow. So it is recycling in, in the greatest sense of the word. Um, 
this work, barring any structural problems, should last a really long time because things don't rot here real fast. In fact, I can almost bet you the paper will last longer than those lodgepole pines will. Lots happened since last week. We've had uh, the Lincoln community out here, up to 14 people working at a time. It's been terrific. Uh, this is, honestly speaking, probably the best volunteer group I've ever had in 25 years of doing this. We've been waiting for more paper. We don't have enough to finish the project, and we're hoping to get more in the next day or so. And in the interim, I've been able to slow down the last couple days and make some decisions about the final configuration of this work. And what I came to essentially was a convex uh, cutting of the poles at the top and then the paper itself will mound over. It will be concave. So the two will meet. We got the wood cut today. I was up on a forklift earlier this morning with the chainsaw and we got those all lopped off. And tomorrow afternoon or Saturday morning we should be back into paper and then there will be a real push next week to finish it. And even with those decisions, the final scale is still up in the air. If you look carefully, you'll see that there's a series of red or orange markers on the tops of the poles. And that is the minimum height for the paper to go. And in that configuration, it could go higher than that. And it is essential with a work like this that the primary viewpoint be figured into the pathways that lead up to it. So what I'm hoping is that we can establish a path coming over here from the east so that you first see the full front of it like a mountain range and then eventually you go around and you see the ridge line. Uh, that's the metaphor. I would just like to say that I came here with uh, the hope that the organizers would have the people of Lincoln behind this project and it was incredibly labor intensive. We spent about two and a half weeks. We had 10, 8, 10, 14 people here on site almost every day working on this project. My arm hurts a lot um, and a lot of other arms hurt, but in the end we built the largest paper piece I've ever done and uh, that's something for us all to be proud of.